Here we're looking at experimental and theoretical probability. So the difference is going to be important to understand. Experimental refers to actually doing the whatever it is, spinning a spinner, rolling a dice, pulling a marble out of a bag. And the theoretical is what we've looked at in the other topics. That's where we're actually calculating what we um, predict to be the mathematical probability. So let's take a look at how those compare to each other. So we've got a spinner. It's got 10 little slices here. And you can see some of them, there are some of that are different colors. And then Heather spins it 50 times. So this is experimental data right here. Okay, so this is what she came up with. Out of those 50 spins, 21 of them came, became, landed on yellow, uh, 12 landed on red, and 17 on blue. Okay, so here's the, here are the questions. First of all, from Heather's results, compute the experimental probability of landing on yellow. Now remember that the, the probability of yellow is going to be, in, in this case, the experimental. It's the number of yellow out of the total. Right, so how many times did we end up with yellow? 21 times. And how many times did we spin it? 50. It says round to the nearest thousandths. So, of course, that means we've got to use our little calculator. And that's going to be uh, 0 0.42, right? So our, our experimental probability of yellow is a 0 0.42. Now, part B, assuming that the spinner is fair, so in other words, there's no, it's not rigged or, or you know, it's not cheesy and you're not holding it up so that it, the spinner falls down here and the bottom all the time then compute the theoretical probability of landing on yellow. Now the theoreticals, like some of the probability that we've done in the previous topics, or well maybe, unless you've chose this one, chosen this one prior, but that's where we just, we don't worry about what we got in the data, we only look at our spinner. So we've got 10 equal parts and how many of them are yellow? Four. So the theoretical probability of yellow in this case is going to be 4 out of 10 which is 0 0.4 so in this case it's 0 0.4 and I'm just going to add another 0 there so you can see how they compare so you see that in this case our experimental probability was a little higher than our theoretical now part C is going to be important to, to think about it says, assuming that it's fair, choose the statement below that's true. As the number of spins increases, we expect the experimental and theoretical probabilities to become closer, though they might not ever be equal. That, let's think about it. You know, if we spun this more and more and more and more and more, like we spent, spun it 50 times, what if we spun it 100 times or, or maybe 1,000 times? Do you think that those two numbers would become closer? They're already pretty close, aren't they? I think that's, you know, that's likely, but we got to look at our other options first. The experimental and theor theoretical probabilities must always be equal. Well, come on. They're not equal here in this case, so that's an automatic counter uh, counter si counter situation. And anytime you see always, you can almost always rule that out. Never say never, right? Here's another option we should consider. As the number of spins increases, we expect the experimental and probability, theoretical probabilities to become farther apart. So do you really think that these are, you know, if we spun it once and we got yellow, the experimental probability of yellow in that case would be one out of one. That means a hundred percent yellow. And that's not even close to our theoretical, is it? If we spun it twice and we got one yellow and one red, 
then our experimental probability is going to be 1 out of 2, 1 half. And that already is way closer to 0.4, isn't it? So that kind of validates this first option. The more times we spin something or roll the dice or whatever, then the better, uh, the closer the two probabilities will come. All right, so that was kind of a long, long explanation. Let's look at another example. Here what we've got is a, a lottery board and it says that we're examining the matching. In one trial the machine outputs a ball with, uh, with one of the digits 0 through 9 on it and then the ball the ball is then replaced in the machine. And the lottery board tested the machine for a thousand trials and got these results. So they basically spit out a ball and if it was a, whatever number it was they would put a little tally mark under it then they put the ball back in spit out another ball tally mark put it back in ball tally mark put it back in a thousand times and these are how many times each of those numbers came up alright so what do we want to look at I'm gonna pull this up here and, and go through it this way so from these test results, compute the experimental probability of a 6 or a 7. So as always, we want to look at experimental probability being the number of times we're going to get what we're looking for over the total. And so how many 6s or 7s were there? If we look right here, 118 and 92, that adds up divide by 1,000 and we get 0.21 as our experimental probability. That comes from the data. Now for part B, it's a, it's a fair machine so none of the balls weigh more than the other etc. They're not a different size and uh, what's the theoretical probability of getting a 6 or a 7? Well 6 is only one of the 10 digits and 7 is only one of the 10 digits so there's a 2 chance out of 10 digit chance that it's going to be a 6 or 7. So our theoretical probability becomes 0 0.2. Now those are pretty close. But once again, for part C, we want to look at all the options. And if we go back here and clear this, clear some of these things out. Whoops, wrong button. Sorry about that. So we're going to look here and it says that uh, with a large number of trials there might be difference, the difference between the experimental and the theoretical should be small. With a large number of trials there's no diff there must be no difference between experimental and theoretical. Well we know that's not true. And with large number of trials, there must be a large difference between experimental and theoretical. That's not true. So our answer here is that, and in most cases, the more times we do an experiment, the closer the probability should come to the theoretical. All right, so have fun with this topic, and uh, be sure to get in touch with your teacher if you need help.